Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro filling in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to join the program today. You can do that by calling us at 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Visit our website, michaelsavage.com. All the latest stories right now, whether it be about ISIS or the controversy with Hillary and the emails, all the latest you can also read about the race for the White House for 2016, Donald Trump. It's all right there at michaelsavage.com. Sign up to get the newsletter free. Email newsletter free at michaelsavage.com. Don't forget, Countdown to Mecca, the bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage, available right now. You can order it at michaelsavage.com. And don't forget, coming up in October... Available for pre-order right now on Amazon and on the website, Government Zero. Latest nonfiction opus coming out in October by Michael Savage. All available at the website, and that is michaelsavage.com. Well, in the news, controversy continues regarding the border. First of all, I don't think a lot of people realize, are you aware that now... Brand new. This is completely new. Pedestrians going to Tijuana from San Diego must now, this is brand new, show a passport, fill out a form, and if staying more than a week, pay roughly $20 to go to Mexico. It's now, Mexico is now charging us. Can you imagine how much money the United States could make? If we were charging all the people that come over the border illegally into the United States. Now, it's $20 or pesos, 322 pesos, if you want to go to Mexico. Now, if you're listening right now, and maybe for whatever reason, yesterday you had to go over and you've come back, give us a call. I want to have firsthand what it's like. This is brand new now. Those that are trying to cross over to go to Tijuana from San Diego must now pay $20 if you're going to stay roughly roughly $20 for a six-month permit. Give us a call at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. There is controversy in the news regarding the term anchor baby. Now, those that have been following, the Savage Nation has. Donald Trump has more than truly struck a chord, continues to be the front runner in the polls, no matter how much they try to knock him down. Trump remains the front runner and his message is getting more crisp and polished record crowds he absolutely killed it at the Iowa State Fair he had a huge gathering and rally in New Hampshire now listen to this this is where political correctness is is meeting the media the media is trying to enforce political correctness and Trump is swatting it away so listen this is reporter from ABC, Tom Lamas is trying to lecture Donald Trump saying that the term anchor babies, and this is a fact, people that live, no matter where you are in the United States, but especially those that live maybe in Texas or California or all parts of the country, what happens? This is a big business online. Pregnant women from other nations, what do they do? They come into the United States in their eighth month or ninth month. They give birth for free. They don't pay anything. They give birth and then boom. The child they deem is an American citizen. I don't think that should be that way. I think Trump is right on in saying we have to repeal that. But instead, the illegals say, oh, there's the child's an American citizen. And so the parents stay, the whole family stays, the uncles and aunts. Everybody stays because they have dropped anchor. Now, I, I have never thought, do you think... That's the question I'm going to ask. Do you think is the term anchor baby offensive? Let's hear. This is the back and forth between the reporter from ABC and Donald Trump. Are you aware that the term anchor baby is offensive? Yes, I am. Why? Because it's 
term anger baby. That's an offensive term. People find that. You mean it's not politically correct and yet everybody uses it? I, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? The American born child of an undocumented oh, You want me to say that? Okay. I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. You tell me which term would you use? He says it should be the American born child of an undocumented immigrant or an anchor baby. If you go on vacation and you end up wherever, maybe you went to you go to Ireland and your your wife happens to be pregnant, you're pregnant and, and you give birth early, is that child you now say, Well, I guess now we have to live here in Ireland because we just gave birth and our child is now a a citizen of Ireland. No, you're an American who just happened to give birth while you were away traveling, whether it be in Ireland or Australia or someone else. And if you have a story, maybe maybe you were listening and you were you went early, you gave birth early, you thought you were going to come back, but you didn't. Is your child, does that mean, well, now my child is a citizen of France? No, that, that, that it doesn't mean that. So this term, I mean, you tell me, is, is the term anchor baby, that's offensive? That was the question from the reporter. Are you aware that's an offensive term? Do you think it's an, an offensive term? I don't find that to be an offensive term. And Lamas of ABC saying it's an American-born child of undocumented immig- immigrants. No, it's not. That child is not an American. What do you think? Give us a call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Now, Trump wasn't done there. Donald Trump continues to talk about the wall. Let's hear. This is clip nine. This is Trump saying... You know, once they build it, maybe it'll be considered the Trump wall. I was watching these uh, characters, politicians that are running against me. You can't get Mexico to pay for the wall. You, of course you can. They can't because they never would even think of it. Do you know how much Mexico is making from the United States? That's peanuts, the wall. You know, he's exactly right. And this is where... This is where we're going to play clip 10. This is where Donald Trump is saying maybe they're going to call it the Trump wall. I'm a great builder. What I do best in life, in all fairness, I build, which is good because your infrastructure in this country is crumbling. Isn't it nice to have a builder, a real builder? So you take precast plank. It comes 30 feet long, 40 feet long, 50 feet long. You see the highways where they can span 50, 60 feet, even longer than that. Right. And you do a beautiful, nice precast plank with beautiful everything just perfect i want it to be so beautiful because maybe someday they're going to call it the trump wall maybe one eight five five four hundred savage we're going to talk about this this afternoon we're also going to talk about the latest with hillary clinton but this business of trump going back and forth and now apparently the washington post is even reporting now even jeb bush he's even being asked see this is now the new term Now they're starting to ask all the candidates about the term anchor baby. And Jeb Bush said today he doesn't believe the term anchor baby is offensive. And now he's blaming Democrats for perpetuating the idea that it's a loaded term. According to the Washington Post, in one of his most aggressive exchanges with reporters to date, Jeb Bush, by the way, his brother, George W., is now starting to raise money for Jeb Bush. I'm going to tell you about that coming up. But Jeb Bush dismissed suggestions that this two-word term deemed offensive by many Hispanics and denounced by Democrats is improper. And Jeb Bush is asking the same question. Do you have a better term? He said, you've got to give me a better term and I'll use it. So he's snapping. Now notice, Bush is starting to turn it up. He sees that Trump is out in front. And Bush, who was asleep, did you see him in that Fox News debate? Jeb Bush was asleep at the switch in that Fox News debate. He was flat. He was stale. He, he it was completely unimpressive. Now, remember, he hasn't won an election in a long time. But he is seeing that Trump is starting to pull away from this, from this whole thing. So now suddenly Jeb Bush, who is still the, you know considered the front runner, he's no longer the front runner, and he has raised a lot of money. What, 100, I think 130 million. But he is starting to sense that Trump is starting to pull away from this thing. So he's starting to ramp it up. And he's starting to go back with the media. And so suddenly now, first yesterday, Jeb Bush started to attack 
Donald Trump. And now, today, even instead of using an opportunity to say, well, you know, I think that uh, that Trump was maybe being a little insensitive and you shouldn't refer to people. No, Jeb Bush is saying the same thing. I don't think that's offensive. Anchor babies. I mean, enough of this. Who are you offending by saying that? Who are you offending? As much as the Democrats and try to say, well, you know, it's offensive to Latinos. And it's it's not. The only people that you would be offending are the people that, in fact, that are using anchor babies. And that's what it is to stay in the country. But I think that that is a myth that somehow, you know, that child is an American. That if somehow a woman travels to the United States and they're in their eighth month or nine month of pregnancy and they give birth and suddenly, lo and behold, oh, there's the child's an American citizen. The child has to stay here. How do you call it? that child, you know, in illegal, that child is still, if someone from Mexico comes into Texas and gives birth, that child is a Mexican child who traveled to Texas and the mother gave birth. That That's it. That does not make the child an American citizen. That doesn't mean the entire family then moves across the border and starts to enjoy all the riches. So we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about Hillary Clinton. I'm going to play the clip. Very clear explanation of exactly what laws she may have broken. And they're very serious. And it's getting worse. And it's not going away. And as much as she tries to pretend it's nothing, Hillary Clinton, the presumed front runner, the front runner, she can't even do a press conference without being pestered questions about the email. How can you run a campaign if you can't answer some basic questions? regarding email it is against the law this is very serious i don't think she's going to make it but the question is they should you know should they keep her afloat and keep it you know you know what's better than hillary damaged in august hillary damaged in december or january that's better and we're going to talk about that as well one eight five five four hundred savage this is john DePietro sitting in for dr michael savage and you're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to join the program one 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go out to your calls, starting with Tim, who's calling from WJR in Detroit. Tim, you're up first on the Savage Nation. Hello, Tim. Go right ahead, Tim. Yeah, I have a comment about your, your statement about the thieves going into Tijuana, but Mexico is charging. Yeah. I believe go right ahead. we always have... We've always had to pay a, a fee. I, I've been traveling in Mexico for well over 20 years. And just in the last five or so years, I started driving into Mexico. And with myself and my children, I've had to pay a fee when I filled out the immigration, you know, the, the temporary visa to go into Mexico. And back in the day when our, our airlines used to have to, you know, they always gave you a, a, a lower price. But then when you paid, it was always like $50, $70 more because it had fa- all the taxes and fees added. If you look, a lot of times when you buy an airplane ticket to Mexico, there is a fee that paid for the visa. Well, again, thank you for the call. But this is being this is brand new. The new border procedure marks a big change at the land crossing that they, they weren't designed to question everyone. So I, I don't know exactly what happened when you and your friends were going years ago, but this is, in fact, brand new. Joe is listening to the Savage Nation on WMAL. Joe, you're next. Hello, Joe. Hi, good afternoon, John. Good show. Hi there. Thank you, Joe. Go right ahead. I was listening to that, Donald, and I think that the word uh, anger baby is not offensive at all. We have baby boomers. We have millenniums. We have... All kinds of other generic terms for people of different uh, births. So, with, you know, uh, the guy that made the big complaint there, the one of that real long acronym, um, I think we ought to call him, him a whining weenie. Well, it, it, thank you for the call. I mean, but he, here's the thing, just so, so people are clear. Both now, Donald Trump and Jeb Bush are using the term 
anchor babies. And you have this reporter, we'll replay it coming up, but from ABC, that is saying that, that they feel that that's offensive. That instead it should be the American-born child of undocumented immigrants. But the, the fact of the matter is, is there are in fact people that want to set up shop here, they want to come in here, and one of their tickets, so to speak, is the fact if they have a child born here. And there are even services set up that they'll walk you through it. And they reach out to these pregnant women. I mean, why else would you? If you're listening right now and you were pregnant, would you want to travel when you're nine months pregnant? I mean, that's when people stop traveling. You want to be close to home. You want to be where your doctor's going to be. You want to be in your own area. You want to be around where you're going to have access to deliver that that child, whether it be at home or whether it be uh, at the ho- obviously most people at the hospital, but you're not going to be traveling abroad. Is that the time that you're going to go on a trip? So that's exactly what they are, and it's it's a sense of then the family sets up anchor. It's not like the family then gets on a plane or then they travel back to their country of origin. Once they land here, they stay here. And what is their, uh, in, in essence, their golden ticket that allows them to stay here is because then they have an American-born child. And then, boom, the whole family is supposed to stay here. So the fact is that this is planned. This is not, you know, someone that's traveling in their eighth month, and then suddenly, boom, you know, they give birth, and uh, and, and they have no control, and then suddenly they, you know, go early and deliver early, and then, therefore, they they, they have to then uh, stay there for a little while. Th- these are these are women from other countries. That That's exactly what the child becomes. The child becomes an anchor baby. Now, coming up, more on the latest with Trump. Also, the latest with Hillary Clinton. This scandal will not go away, and we're going to break it out exactly. What laws? A lot of people are questioning what exact laws are involved with Hillary Clinton. What possible laws did she break? We're going to play it for you and take more of your phone calls at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. It's John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. I'll be very proud of that wall. If they call it the Trump wall, it has to be beautiful. And you put that plank up and you dig your footings and you put that plank up. There's no ladder going over that. If they ever get up there, they're in trouble because there's no way to get down. Maybe a rope. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro filling in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to join the program. You can call us 1-855-400-4. Savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Of course, that's Donald Trump talking about the type of wall that more and more people realize needs to be built, is needed. More controversy now. Trump arguing with the media just even over the term anchor babies. But then you even have Jeb Bush now today joining in saying that why is that offensive? Is the term anchor babies offensive? Make sure you visit our website. It's michaelsavage.com, all your news. Sign up for the free newsletter. And don't forget, still plenty of time left. Countdown to Mecca is still available. Great end of summer read. And you can also pre-order Dr. Savage's new book that's coming out in October, Government Zero, the nonfiction opus coming in October. Pre-order it now on Amazon. All right, let's get back to your phone calls. Vanessa is listening on WDRC in Connecticut. Vanessa, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Vanessa's husband. She had to go out on an animal rescue, but Trump's... Hello, Vanessa's husband. Greetings to you, John. Trump uh, is unstoppable if he does the following. He simply removes himself from the next one debate. And, and then he is uh, elected uh, by landslide by demonstrating he's putting his money where his mouth is. In other words, he's told us how little regard that we should have for the media. And we do have low regard. And I'm talking about the mainstream media, Fox News Channel, PMS NBC, ABC, CBS, you know them all. And now, listen, I'm, I'm going to hold you just there because we thought we were going to talk with Vanessa and then for whatever reason now the, the husband's on the line. I, you know, I, I disagree with that business of he's going to skip the next debate because I, I think, and, and we'll see, but the next debate is in, in September. It's on CNN. And, and I think, as you saw last time, the debates are a chance for Trump to showcase himself against the rest of the field. 
And even though he was under attack in the Fox News debate under Megyn Kelly, he still came out ahead of the field. So, you know, th- this business of he doesn't, you know, need them and doesn't need to put himself through that, I... As much as you you could almost make an argument for that, I still think he's better off to showcase himself against them and how he is heads and shoulders above the rest of them right now. Let's go to Mark on line two. He's listening on KSFO. Mark, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Mark. Hello, John. Nice to meet you, and uh, thank you for filling in. You're very Uh, welcome. I was born a United States citizen to... uh, a father when I was in Italy. I do not consider myself an anchor baby. I consider myself a United States citizen. And I'm very proud of the fact my father married my mother in Italy. But this idea of running across the border to get a legal status is a joke. And I don't like the term anchor baby, but that is the right term. Why don't you like that term? Well, it's because it makes you feel like... uh, you're taking up roots and you're dropping off and like off of a ship or something. But there are you're people just... doing that, though. Mark, wake up. There are people doing that. Maybe your family didn't do it, but are you going to deny that that many of the people and that's how they're coming in here that they are doing that? That's exactly what they're doing. I'll tell you. Thank you for the call, Mark. I'll tell you what I like about the term, and we're going to replay it again just so everyone's aware. But because it's accurate, that's exactly what they do. And those that sail will tell you: you drop anchor. You. That's it. This is where we're going to be. Uh, let's play this again. This is clip six. This is what it comes down to. Donald Trump is being challenged by a reporter from ABC, Tom Lamas, who's lecturing him, trying to say the term anchor baby is offensive. Are you aware that the term anchor baby, that's an offensive term. People find that. You mean it's not politically correct and yet everybody uses it? I, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? American-born child, oh, you want me to say that? Okay, I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. Let's go to line four. Shane is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Shane, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Savage, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Very well. Go right ahead, Shane. Uh, so basically, I was born in Canada. My parents are uh, both U.S. citizens, and... Uh, I've lived here in the U.S. since uh, 1973, and now I moved from Texas to Virginia. The DMV won't give me my driver's license until I prove I'm an American citizen. Can you believe that? I can. Thank you for the call, Shane. See, this is one of the problems with people that never settle exactly what their citizenship is. Line one is Vinny. He's listening on WABC in New York. Vinny, hello. You're on the Savage Nation. Hey, great show. Uh, I don't understand that when it's like an illegal immigrant that's pregnant with a baby, they use the term that it's a baby. You know, if she's pregnant with the baby, don't you feel bad? It's a kid. But when the Planned Parenthood wants to commit an abortion, it's no longer a baby. It's a fetus. It's not a human. I, I don't get it. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Vinny. one 855 Four hundred savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. There's a new poll out today in Texas. Now you would think that Ted Cruz would be on top in that poll. Guess again, Donald Trump out in front in the new poll in Texas. Isn't it amazing how he has just struck a chord, and how many people continue to say he's just going to fade? But how many people like the fact somebody is speaking up? somebody that's a non-politician, and he is upping the game in the Republican Party for those that are that are running for president. Line six is Kevin listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Kevin, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kevin. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, in your introduction, you used an example of Ireland. Ten years ago, Ireland changed their citizenship laws, so there's no longer uh, citizenship by birth. The child would have to have Irish uh, citizen parents at the time of birth to be considered a citizen. And with respect... I, I, you understand I'm just using that as an example, right? I mean, if someone... doesn't matter whether it's Ireland or whether it's Australia or whether it's Japan or wherever you go. If you went there and were visiting and your your wife had a child, whether it was in the ninth month or what, you know, gave birth early, 
uh, in the eighth month, you would not say, well, I guess now we have to live in Australia. I guess, well, I guess now we have to live here. I mean, you're not saying you would act then live there, right, Kevin? No, what I'm pointing out is that even Ireland changed their laws because they were facing uh, an illegal immigration problem. Right. They did it 10 years ago. And I think the term anchor baby is exactly right. L.A. County uh, estimates $1 billion last year spent for social services for the children of illegals. Hmm. $1 billion, and that's one county in California for one right. year. So wow. uh, Think- they are laying anchor. <laughs> They are. Thank you for the call, Kevin. Line two is Anthony. He's listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Anthony, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Anthony. Hello, John DePetro. Thank you for taking my call. What I wanted to say. Very welcome. With this this new generation that they are supposedly coming over, what do they have to offer and provide? The previous generations, baby boomers, have provided infrastructure, knowledge, architecture, engineering, social status, presidential candidates. This new generation, me being 30, I feel bad for them because they have nothing to offer to this country. Well, you know, it's funny, Anthony, and and I think and Donald Trump is saying the same thing. Anthony, wouldn't you feel differently if we had an organized system and there was maybe some company that needed specific labor and maybe uh, it was even people that were very, very talented in a certain area, whatever it may be, and then therefore... It's almost like a casting call goes out for those that would like to come here and work for that company, and they would be part of something big, and they would use those very uh, God-given specific talents that then they would be able to uh, you know, put forward and, and demonstrate and be on display here in the United States. Wouldn't you then feel differently about the types of people that would be coming in? Well, I'll tell you for an example, Mr. Petro. Uh, um My father is an immigrant from Greece, from a very small island, came here and has a very successful business for 45 years. Due to now the new skills of workers, they are doing it for less, ran my father out of business for 45 years, a successful business that we have lived on and survived on as a family. Now, these new families, are they actually claiming all their taxes? Are they showing what they're paying in in liability and insurances and business license? I don't think so. No, they're they're absolutely not. Thank you for the call, Anthony. They're not. And when you think of, you know, think of where your money really goes to. If you sat down, you're listening right now to the Savage Nation, and if you sat down and really looked at where every penny that you make and where it goes, and not just your own bills you're paying, you know, whether it be a cable bill or an Amex bill or your car loan or or the electric company, but I mean everything. And then you start to look at how much you pay in taxes and where is the money that you're paying in taxes going? And think of all that money that you're putting forward and then you see somebody down the street and they're not paying taxes and they're not paying any of those taxes. They're just grabbing it all and they're just even sending it home or, or keeping it themselves. How can anyone rationalize that that's fair or that you should pay for their child to go to an emergency. You should pay for their child to go to school for free. You should pay for their street to get plowed in the winter time. You should pay for their family to be able to use the parks, be able to use the libraries, be able to you know get the trash picked up. Why should you have to pay that? Line four is Jane listening on great radio station WABC. The Big 77 in New York. Jane, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jane. Hi. Um, good day. Um, what you're saying is absolutely true. I have a neighbor who's a labor and delivery nurse. I live in Monmouth County, New Jersey. We have a very high population of Mexican immigrants. Um, they come over in their seventh, eighth, and ninth month. They plan it that way, and they get instant charity care. They get to enroll their kids in our schools. I pay $6,500 in property taxes on a tiny little postage stamp of a house and more than half of it goes to the schools. If you are near a school when it lets out, you would swear you're in Mexico. Um, Their culture is to have a lot of children. Um, And, you know, here's another point that nobody's bringing up. Uh, 20 or 30 of them may live in a house like different families. They're only paying one rent on that house, so they're not even contributing that way to property taxes through the rental system. And another thing is... um, there's, this is admitted to me by someone, by an actual Mexican immigrant, because I'm in the service industry as well. So this is, this is uh, as an equal, she was telling me their culture, they have a lot of drinking problems in their culture. 
and I see that around here. And right now, these, these drunks are riding bikes because they don't have licenses. But what happens if we legalize them, and now they're on the road driving and drinking? It's a very big problem in the Mexican community. I can attest to well, that. I, I thank you for the call, Jane. I got news for you, though. They are driving. They are driving on the roads, and they're not insured, and they are drinking heavily, and they are involved in hit and runs and crime, and then they don't stop, and that's why your insurance rates are going up, and it's already happening right now. The ones that you're seeing on bicycles, that think of the drinking problems they have, that even they won't get behind the wheel. Let's go to line eight. Steve is listening on KSFO, great radio station in San Francisco. Steve, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Thank you, sir, for taking my call, and thank you for keeping the seat warm for the Supreme. For the great one. <laughs> the thank, you. thank you. Uh, I was thinking, you're right, you're right, when you have bus loads full of Asian women uh, coming to the U.S. To, to deliver babies, when they are coming on airplanes, buses, just to have their babies born over here, uh, those are anchor babies, and they return with them later for educations, for colleges, and for all those benefits later on in life. But the other reason why I called is uh, Dr. Savage had Donald Trump on on his radio show, which me and the Savage Nation appreciates. Uh, I appreciated that interview, and I just wanted to ask Dr. Savage and the Savage Nation if we can get Donald Trump back on and encourage him to talk more about Hillary Clinton. For example, when they left the the White House, uh, the Clintons, they stole a bunch of stuff from the White House, which they later had to return. Uh, in 2008 presidential uh, campaign, she, Mrs. Clinton, accused Barack Obama of not being ready for that 2 a.m. middle of the night uh, national security phone call. Phone call. However, yep. as a uh, secretary of state, she got tested by that phone call when That's uh, true. our, our, our uh, citizens being murdered in Libya and our embassy was burning and she failed our citizens who got murdered. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve, I, I, I can't speak for Dr. Savage, obviously. No one can. But I, I would assure you, I would think that Donald Trump, if he was smart, he would reach out, which he has, and have the, uh, the honor of addressing the Savage Nation and the millions of loyal fans and listeners that follow Dr. Michael Savage. Thank you for the call. one 400 savage John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This is the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Don't forget, visit our website. It's michaelsavage.com. Out to the phones. Line three. Dawn is listening on WMAL. Dawn, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Thank you so much for taking my call today. Uh, I just want to point out that the Donald is spot on with everything he is discussing. And as much as people dislike the term anchor baby, it is a fact. And I'm frankly, I'm tired of people who think with their emotions instead of their logic. And that's almost uh, representative of the left and the right. It's not ex- identical, actually, when you think about it. Um, case in point, I think Mr. Trump needs to keep doing what he's doing. He's um, similar to Dr. Savage in the way that he respects our borders, our language, and our culture. And he does so in a very matter-of-fact and bold way. Excellent point, Dawn. Thank you for the call. Still ahead, more on Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton. Again, John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. Excellent. 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And you're listening to The Savage Nation. Welcome. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, taking your phone calls at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Visit our website, michaelsavage.com, for all your news needs. Sign up for the free newsletter. You can see all the headlines. Savage Nation, Intel Ops call Savage and tell how Clinton broke many laws. Also, another headline at michaelsavage.com. Donald Trump says, if a Republican did what Hillary Clinton did, they'd already be in jail. The secret war and more. Folks, sign on, log on at michaelsavage.com. Countdown to Mecca, still available. Great end of summer read is Countdown to Mecca. And Government Zero, the nonfiction opus, coming in October. You can pre-order it now on Amazon. Well, as I just mentioned, Donald Trump talking about Hillary Clinton. We're also going to play for you. It was a great piece on the Savage Nation of Dr. Savage speaking with some callers regarding Hillary Clinton and clearly laying out for you to understand, because you're hearing different blurbs in the news, exactly what type of laws were broken. Now, the latest headline, State Department can't find blackberries of Clinton's closest aides. What a surprise. Say they were probably destroyed. This is according to The Hill. Also, you wonder about this one. Why did Hillary skip Former President Bill Clinton's 69th birthday bash. Ten people joined him, including rocker John Bon Jovi. Who was not there? Hillary Clinton. Instead, she continues to battle with reporters that are now starting to seize in and question her over the emails. Let's go with some of the sound. Clip two. Now, this is Fox's Ed Henry questioning the former Secretary of State, over that email server. You were in charge of it. You were the official in charge. Did you like the server? What, like with a cloth or something? No. Well, no. I don't. I know you want to make a point, and I can just repeat what I have said. It's a in order to In order to be as cooperative as possible, we have turned over the server. They can do whatever they want to with the server to figure out what's there or what's not there. That's for the you know people investigating it to try to figure out. But we turned over everything that was work-related, every single thing. Personal stuff, we did not. I had no obligation to do so and did not. All right. Thank, Thank you all. Thank, Thank you all very much. Is there indication that this issue isn't going to go away for the remainder of your campaign? Nobody talked to me about it other than you guys. No one talked to me about it other than the entire press corps that is following around. Who do you think she she think is going to talk to her about it? Let's say we're again. This is Hillary insisting. Clip four. She's turned everything over. I turned over out of an abundance of uh, an attempt to be helpful over anything that I thought was even vaguely related. In fact, they've already concluded twelve more than twelve hundred of the emails I gave them have nothing to do with the work. And I said make them public. And that's the process that one goes through to make them public. So I know there's a certain level of, you know, uh, sort of anxiety or interest in this. But the facts are the facts. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Now, Bill Gertz writes, and again, we have a great piece coming up a little bit later this hour. Hillary Clinton, two aides appear to have violated two national security laws by sending classified information on a private email server. According to a former Army counterintelligence agent and investigator for Public Interest Law Group. Additionally, the two Clinton aides, Huma and Cheryl Mills, disregarded a federal judge's order this month requiring both to make sworn statements to the court that all government documents in their possession will be returned to federal officials, said Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations for Judicial Watch. What we have is a Secretary of State, the only cabinet official in our history, 
who's established her own private email server in an effort to avoid the normal protocols for unclassified and classified communication. It's an end run. You know, this is another example. We'll go to your phone calls. But another example where there are the, the rules, there are the laws, and then the Clintons feel, right, that they're above the law. Even something as simple as this, they cannot follow the protocols and the law as it's laid out. Let's go to your phone calls. Line six is Christine listing on WMAL in Washington. Christine, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Chris, Christy. I'm sorry, Christy. Go right ahead, Christy. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I want well. to comment on the anchor baby term. It's neither offensive or, or not offensive. It's inaccurate. They're not anchor babies. They're illegal immigrants, just like the parents that brought them here or carried them over um, and, and their children. And, and I, I, I frankly don't understand how um, other relatives get connected um, and allowed to stay in this country. I, I, I just don't understand it, and I don't think what we call them um, is the issue. And, and while, of course, that's what the, the left will focus on, is the political correctness of it all, not the actual issue at hand. Isn't that interesting, Christy, that somehow a child is born, and in their minds and in the minds of especially the Democrats and the politicians, that means that entitles the grandparents, the uncle, the aunt, all the relatives, everyone connected with that one child, suddenly it's like a golden passport that includes all of them, and all of them get to stay because one of them had a child. I mean, Christy, that's what, you you tell me, that's basically what happens. Right, I don't get it. I don't understand where, when did this happen? When when did we start allowing this? How, you know, I, I, I don't think a lot of Americans really grasp how large the problem is and certainly don't understand when this started and how this has been allowed to proliferate to the point where it is today. Christy, thank you for the call. You're exactly right. And and, and what you need to understand is this has become big business. This is not there there are agencies set up where you go with them, they'll set you up, they'll set you up in a hotel, they'll set you up where you're gonna be in the hospital. I mean that you pay the money. If you're in another country, there are companies set up granted illegally but they'll show you the way a path they'll be your guide it's like a tour guide exactly how to come here have the child here boom and then you get to stay here one eight five five four hundred savage line nine is mike listening on wabc he wants to talk about hillary clinton love me um i'm listening to the show and as i'm driving home from work and i see a sign in a yard for hillary in 2016 after talking about everything, I just cannot see how somebody can still think that she's okay to be president. I mean, the lies are just unreal to me. Thank you for the call, Mike. You know what's also interesting about that is, can you imagine what it would take if she were, in fact, president in trying to get information? Can you imagine? I mean, we all, everybody wants to talk about a transparent government. Can you imagine if she were and the amount of hidden documents, stonewalling, can't get a straight answer. What about in your own office or in your life? People can't stand someone that they feel these are the rules for everyone else and then these are the rules for me. And that is how they behave. And they try to pretend it's something else and make jokes about wiping it down with a cloth. She can't even handle emails properly. Line three, Epi is listing on KUGN in Oregon. Epi, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Epi. It, it was a pleasure. To talk, it's a pleasure talking with you, sir, and thank you um, for this lightning round of allowing people to call in. First, my first point is on this anchor baby thing. My uh, my great 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 grandfather came to this nation, and he came legally. And my great great aunt fought for this country. My father, 
Okay, my father went through both services, the Army and when he went through the Army for the first three years, then he actually was recruited to the United States Air Force Special Forces Pararescue. My father has pulled people out of things that we can't even imagine what, what's done. Now, no, that's number one. I am a American citizen who has Mexican heritage. And I want to say to every Mexican-American out there, I don't even like the guy. I'm an American. So, number one, every one of you out there, when you're filling out those things and they ask you, uh, you need to go to the doctor or whatever, what's your ethnicity? Let me just share you, brother. You're an American, and the ground that you live on, the ground and the dirt that you dug on is yours. Don't give that up. My second point, Hillary Clinton. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing that's happening right now because she's being confronted with what's called the truth. And I know I'm speaking to a lot of people right now, but here's what I'm trying to say. The truth will set you free. But apparently, here's the thing. The truth is going to put her in a hole. I want you to know the emails that she got, they were specific locations of our ambassador, that woman has blood on her hands because she allowed that man to be murdered because our government was working with ISIS, or should I say the Syrian rebels, quote unquote. Now look. Well, Epi, here's, here's the thing, Epi, and thank you for the call. The, the fact, one thing you hit on is it's tough to get to the truth when you have someone like Hillary that continues to block efforts to at least get simple things like emails. Line six is Sarah, listening on WMAL in Washington. Sarah, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. They're going to let her play the senior citizen card, too. She's been mugging a lot in photographs, acting a little bit old. You know, they'll play the woman card, whatever. But I wanted to say to the person that said that anchor baby is not the correct term. It's illegal immigrant, whatever. They're not immigrants. That's inappropriate. They're illegal alien invaders an anchor baby we've been working on it through numbers usa ferris everything trying to get this stopped it's an abuse of an amendment that was never meant for that but hillary you know they're talking the last couple days about really Jarrett and obama setting hillary up for this which means ultimately to me is would that be a third term or a michelle nominal uh, presidency i'm just saying that it seems like hillary's acting a little cuckoo and she's going to fall on the senior citizen card and the woman card to, to get out that, of it. that is an interesting point to uh, to watch sarah thank you folks one eight five five four hundred savage john DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, you're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program. Just dial one 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282 for all the latest news and headlines. Log on to our website. It's michaelsavage.com. I'm looking at latest polls out of Texas. In the lead, the front runner is Donald Trump, 24%, ahead of Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who's now in second place at 16%. How about Governor Rick Perry, former longtime Texas Governor Rick Perry? A non-factor, just 4% in his own state, along Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker and former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Sue on line 9 is listening on WJR in Ohio. Sue, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to tell the people that are offended by the term anchor baby that they don't get to tell me how to speak my native language. And this goes right to the First Amendment. If it offends them... The First Amendment gives me the right to offend them. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you for the call, Sue. How about line three? George is listening on WABC in New York. George, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, George. Okay, hi. Uh, Two points connected. The term anchor baby is not liked by the liberals because it implies something illegal, and their propaganda is to make everything legal. The second point connected to that, when that pregnant woman comes to this country and she gets in trouble, where's the first place she goes? To her consulate, which implies geographic sovereignty, and the branch is part of the tree. 
so the baby is under the same geographic sovereignty, not American sovereignty. Well, I thank you for the call. I think the first place she goes is the hospital and then gives birth, doesn't have to pay for it. And then suddenly they announce the child's an American citizen. Line six is Dave listing on KKOB. Dave, you're up on the Savage Nation, wants to talk about Hillary. Hello, Dave. Good afternoon. I don't know how old you people are on the radio, but do you remember in 1996, uh, Hillary and uh, Bill were subpoenaed to bring out re- records about the Rose law-, law Firm? They hid them in that White House until the uh, subpoena had worn out and uh, had no just. She's been doing this lie bit for the last 20, 30 years, and people have been letting her get away with it. You know, she's not nothing new to lying. She lies to her teeth. And what, well, what the, Bill the, thank you for the call. Well, thank you for the call, Dave. I, I want to just hold it there. But it, it, it's definitely a different set of rules. You got to admit that when it comes to the Clintons. Line four is Richard listening on WMAL in our nation's capital. Richard, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Richard. Hey, thank you for taking my call. Um, there's one difference about that last caller when he said about the Rose Law Firm. It, it's, the difference is is this national security is at risk here, and I think everyone, most of the media, I think they get that. Even liberal MSNBC get that. Um, the other thing is what I want to call about was. The Obamas and the Clintons came in to office claiming to be all about technology and know all about it. They screwed up healthcare.gov. They screwed up the IRS emails claiming the hard drive crash. Everyone in D.C. area works in IT. We all know that's a lie. And and then this thing about her emails, there was nothing convenient about her having that email server. I've, we, we know all about what it's like to set up a server in government. You need lots of approvals. Um, you need to get it accredited. You need to get it scanned by our security division. There's, yep. it, it wasn't about convenience. It was about her evading people and having to answer. Right. And, and here, here's the thing, Richard. Coming up, we're going to play you a clip. Clearly explained what laws she broke. It's John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. This is Michael Savage. We have a wonderful fill-in host today, but i got to tell you something. Yesterday, we had some callers on this show who called in from Washington, D.C. on WMAL. All of them are unknown to me. They all work in the intelligence community, some for as long as 50 years, and they broke new ground. They have reports I didn't read on the Drudge Report or read in the New York Times. Nobody heard what you're about to hear. News that broke about the Hillary email scandal. Right here on the Savage Nation. Now let's listen. Gary from MAL in Washington. Gary, go ahead, please. Yeah, hey, Doc. You know, we keep hearing about what was found on Hillary's server, satellite imagery, top secret level stuff, and whatever. What a lot of people don't understand is that you just cannot sit at a top secret enclave uh, terminal and type out an email to Hillary at, you know, pantsuit.com or whatever. You had, that room is generally what is known as it's a skiff, it's a secure compartmentalized information facility. It tends to be a room within a room that is uh, partially, most times, a Faraday cage, which prevents any spurious emanations for RF emanations from leaving that area. So bottom line is, is that somebody had to either type that stuff up and redact the fact that it was a uh, secret, uh, S-I-T-K, no foreign, whatever, and, uh, or they had to put it on some sort of a removable media, which is not allowed in a skiff, and they had to remove it from this secure room fingerprints, you know, the whole nine yards just to get in the room so that these pe- people could get the information to Hillary. There was so many other laws broken other than the fact that she had... Wow. On her service. Wow. Gary, I never heard this before. Where, where, oh, were you a man who works in the, in the military? Uh, I have, and I still do, yes. What you just said on this national radio show, has this been expressed on other shows, or has it been printed in newspapers? I haven't heard it. I've been looking for it. I've been trying to get through to other shows and all that. I'm surprised I actually got through to you because I always get a busy signal. Gary, what you just said has made news on this show. It should make news around the world. So the Defense Department sends this information to the secret facility. What happened next? Well, again, regardless of how the information gets there, okay, it's classified. It's TS. So it's in this room, which and, and you... you that it, it could have come from another skiff, from another location. However it gets there, okay? Bottom line is that just very secure enclosed networks period okay so you know but you can't 
You cannot just there's inside of it. You can't sit to next to uh, a TS terminal in one of these places and actually sit down and then go and do Google, okay? Because that does not exist in there, okay? It, According to my my knowledge, access to skiffs is normally limited to those with top secret clearance, and this. Non-cleared personnel and SCIF units must be under constant oversight to prevent unauthorized access to classified material. What happened next, Gary? How did this person get it to Hillary? Well, again, there's, there's, there's no way that they can just email it from the secure terminal to, again, Hillary at, you know, pantsuit.com, wherever she's at. You can't just go from that enclave to an unclassified or commercial network because they do not exist in the same reality at all so it had to be either copied somehow written typed or whatever and then removed physically from this skiff to be put onto a non-commercial mean or excuse me a non uh secure means like a so, uh, so gary in, in 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 amateur terms we're listening in for the first time somebody had to copy it and send it to her from that room not from that room it has to be removed from that room it has to be removed from the ts enclave because there is no commercial access points in these rooms, period. Well, you mean so somebody wrote it down and took it out of the room? Or they put it on a thumb drive or a CD, but those sorts of media are generally taboo and inside of... Somebody, somebody did a thumb drive or a JPEG in a top-secret room and took it to Hillary Clinton? It's, it's possible. That's the only other way. That's the only well, way Gary, you have stopped my breath for a moment, and I thank you for calling the Savage Nation. This could be the most important breaking point in this whole story. Rebecca, on line six right now from WMAL again in the nation's capital. Rebecca, please come on to the Savage Nation and tell the people what you know. Thank you, sir. It is definitely an honor to be on your show. Uh, it sparked me to call Thank you. hearing Gary. I was actually driving home uh, from my way from the Pentagon, and I've been working in the intelligence community, both as active duty military as well as a DOD contractor for 23 years now. And Basically, backing him wow. 100%. Everything that he has said is 100% accurate. I work even in an open classified, which is only secret, at uh, from my main office. You have to check your cell phone. You can't even bring your cell phones in. You can't bring anything that's recordable in there. Now, yeah, Re Rebecca. So it, wait, let, let's let's back up. Hillary Clinton transmitted secretive, very top-secret satellite data to somebody. We don't know to who. She said in a joke, what, did I use a cloth to wipe it? How did she get that imagery? Who, who did someone remove it from the room for her? Well, and, and that's what I can't understand, because like Gary was saying, you have unclassified, uh, your, your normal computers that everyone uses, you can Google, you can email. Then you have a secret level, which is the next enclave up. That in and of itself is not at all connected whatsoever to the unclassified network. It's a completely separate entity. I cannot email from Google to my secret account or from my secret to my, my Gmail account. I can't do that. Now let's take it, take it up one more step. Now we're getting to the TS and actually SBI level, which is the skips, which is your top secret level. Now at that point, that's even, you know, that's higher, more secure. Um, you have to have additional clearances to get in there. I've been, you know, I've had those clearances and you can't even go between top secret and secret. It's not possible. And if they're talking geospatial information, which is what I have heard on the news, we're talking satellite imagery, that is TSSCI. I can tell you that right off the bat. I know that for a fact. Rebecca, that is what? It, that is top secret. Typically, SCI level, which is an additional code on top of the top secret. And I, in the, the So how would somebody have taken that, that satellite imagery out of that secret room the James Bond room, and gotten it to Hillary. What did they have to do to bring it out of there? See, that's what I can't comprehend, because I, I was a cryptologist for crying out loud. I, I you know, worked this. And the... the you are a, wait, you are a cryptologist in the Defense Department, Rebecca? I was a cryptologist in, when I was active duty military for eight years, and then I flipped over now. I'm basically DOD IT. I mean, I work Holy God. in computer systems. So the thing is, is that the USB ports that you typically would, you know, put your thumb drive in, or, as well as your, your writable DVD drives, those are typically completely disabled on those systems. So, you know, forget about not even being able to bring it in there. They're typically disabled. There is usually one person who has the authority, um, and there's always TPI, two-person integrity, when you're dealing with SCIF, even the safes have two different combos held by two different individuals so that no one person can access these things individually. 
So I, I'm, I'm. Let me ask you something. This top secret facility has a skiff in it. It's a secure room. Is it underground? Where are these things? Typically, they're not always underground. Sometimes they are, but sometimes uh, they can be internal. Though you'll never see one with windows. Because, like Gary was saying, they're they're specially protected so that the electronic emissions cannot escape. Mm. So oh, so so spies. So, in other words, foreign governments can't pick up the signal. Absolutely. So you'll, they'll typically be either underground in a basement, or they'll be internal in a building where you can have this this heavy duty structural integrity to the building to these rooms. This is unbelievable to me. Let me ask you, Rebecca, you work in intelligence. You're a former cryptologist. You see the Hillary story. What do you feel in your heart of hearts went on here? Who was she sending this to and for what reason? Unfortunately, there is, there is not one positive reason that I can find. There is not one. Everything has got to be... I, I, I'm, <laughs> I can't come up with any, any, you know, any good, logical, rational explanation for it. Because I'll tell you right now, if I had even a basic... Uh, um, security incident where I left a piece of crypto out or I somehow had classified information in an unclassified space, not only would I automatically lose my job and my security clearances, but I would more than likely be brought up on charges as well. Right. Now, in, in your business of this world that you live in, this top secret world, you live a very tense life because you are trust, trusted with the greatest secrets the government has, irrespective of Republican or Democrat. We are still a sovereign nation and we have a lot of enemies who would like to see us go under. What the heck was she transferring and to whom? What in the world was she sending? What was this about? Okay, we understand it was satellite imagery about Benghazi. Isn't that what we've all heard in the news so far? That's what I believe. I believe there's something really deep oh. and dark under there. Oh, my God. Please, let's not let our minds get carried away. Do we know when this happened? Did it happen before the ambassador was killed by the mobs or after? We don't know. But it could have been going on the whole time. We just don't know. And with her having you know, professionally wipe these servers numerous times, if they magnetize those drives, we'll never know from that piece that she turned over. If, if they did a, a professional, you know, situation where they magnetize with the same level that the DOD does it, um, that's going to be hard for any forensics to recover. The only thing that I'm hoping is, is well, it's, it's a catch-22. You, you hope nobody had backups or copies because there was classified information, if that's true. But on the same <laughs> note, if there was, then that would be the one positive route we'd have to be able to track it down and actually find out exactly what happened. I'm not going to ask you whether you're a Republican or Democrat because it doesn't matter to me. You're, you're an individual who loves America, and that's why you work in the top-secret field that you work in. What is the feeling without giving away any information amongst your coworkers about what this means for America and national security in general. Is there buzz going on in the intelligence community about what Hillary did? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're and all... What are, they, what are they... We're all what? Appalled. It's, a, it's such a double standard because we know we're heavily scrutinized, and rightfully so, um, you know, with, with the background checks and constantly having to have to report anything in our, in our lives that could potentially um, be an issue for us. And we're do you the think that the FBI, um, do you think the FBI, Obama's FBI, Loretta Lynch's FBI is actually going to get to the bottom of this? Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have the faith that I wish I did, that that will happen. Right. It's not an independent FBI. Loretta Lynch was handpicked, by the way, by Al Sharpton, if you can believe it. Al Sharpton, a man of this low caliber, lobbied to have Loretta Lynch, a U.S. attorney from New York City, or New York area, made the attorney general, and Obama made her attorney general. Do we actually believe that a woman appointed by Barack Obama is going to blow the whistle on a Democrat? I don't, I don't feel that's even within the realm of possibility. Actually, the, there is one potential, I think, that, that it would happen. And that's if there's something going on in the administration or in the big scheme of things that, for whatever reason, they decided they don't want Hillary Clinton to be the nominee and this would be the easiest way to take her out. So there could be, there could be collusion coming from the Obama camp to make certain Hillary is not nominated as president, and we won't know why, but there could be collusion, and that's why we're even hearing about this, right? Right, and that's pure speculation for me on my part, but unfortunately I've become a little bit more cynical over the Well, thank you. Oh, cynical is good. When you live in a cynical time with a cynical president and a cynical government, I think cynicism is a healthy, a healthy attitude.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call the program one 855 400 Savage. Visit our website. It's michaelsavage.com. Log on. Remember, Countdown to Mecca, still available. Great end of summer read. You can also see all the latest news and headlines. Sign up for the free Savage Nation newsletter. You were just listening to a segment where some intelligence, people have worked in government intelligence, walking Dr. Savage through exactly the type of trouble that Hillary Clinton could in fact be in let's go back to your calls line nine is scott listing on wmal scott this is john DePietro and you're up on the savage nation hello scott hi john how are you uh thanks for uh, taking my call i just wanted to clarify something i didn't hear in yesterday's program um i mean it's a serious matter whichever way you look at it and and absolutely indictable but the parts that weren't uh, that i did not hear and when i worked in the e-ring and yeah that the the pentagon's e-ring we handled all the above when it came to classified material. Uh, and, and my clearance level was higher than most and, and less than a few. The, uh, the caveat that I need to bring up is that when a principal, and when I say a principal, whether it be a four-star ammo, three-star ammo, you know, a secretary of defense, sex, sex state, whatever, the, uh, the two-part integrity rule is in play. But that, that material, that TSSCI material, can be placed in paper form locked in an envelope or a box and, and, and walked with, by two people to the, to the principal's office for review and acknowledgement. And what I think, and, and this is just what I think, and I'm sure there's a lot of SSOs out there, and that's uh, special security officers, what needs to be eyeballed and looked at is that who signed for the material, and once it got to uh, Clinton's office, what happened right. to it from there? That's when we par- possibly get into some significant OPSEC breaches. And, you know, that, that's the part that really, in my opinion, needs to be investigated. Cause that's- Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call, Scott. I want to point out, uh, just mentioned, there's a great piece in the Washington Times, why Obama is torpedoing Hillary Clinton by Monica Crowley. And she writes, you know, the president craves a successor who will preserve his legacy. If you remember, do you remember the whole thing? I remember Hillary, you well, you're like enough. You're likable enough. And Bill Clinton saying, you know, a few years ago, this guy would have been getting us coffee. Well, President Obama has kind of talked about, oh, third term would be great. How about someone that he can completely control possible, possibly over a third term? Let's go to line four. Joan is listening on KKOH. Joan, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Joan. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. My comment is about the anchor babies. In the practice of law, if uh, evidence is obtained by illegal means, it isn't allowed to be presented. It's called fruit of the poisonous tree. So if you apply that to our illegal problem, if the parents are here illegally, the child is here illegally. It is the fruit of the poisonous tree. I just wondered if the liberals would prefer that name to anchor baby that was my comment for today that that is an interesting comment joan and again you know again you have to credit trump with bringing this issue up for taking it on head on and suddenly now you have everyone paying attention to it everyone talking about the border everyone talking about the wall and then this foolishness this political correctness of whether or not it's offensive to use the term anchor baby I mean, it's having an effect overseas. They're watching what's going on with Trump. They're seeing how people are reacting to his comments. And the people in power are seeing the American people, all of us, are fed up. Remember the website, michaelsavage.com? This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Adult content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. Hey 
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And you're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to call into the program one. 1- 855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number, 1-855-400-7282. You can log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. Still haven't gone on vacation yet? Well, you're in luck. Countdown to Mecca, still available. A great end of summer read while we all wait for October, Government Zero. The nonfiction opus coming out in October by Michael Savage. You can pre order it right now on Amazon. Don't forget at michaelsavage.com. All your news headlines. Also, sign up for the free Savage newsletter. One of the stories that you'll see at michaelsavage.com continues to be on the race for the White House, the latest on Donald Trump, the latest also on Jeb Bush. We're going to play some of their comments. And, of course, Hillary Clinton, the scandal that continues to get bigger. Now Bill Gertz reporting Hillary Hillary and two aides appear to have violated two national security laws by sending classified information on a private email server. Now Hillary was peppered with questions about this at a press conference. Here she is claiming she did not send classified material whether it was a personal account or a government account i did not send classified material and i did not receive any material that was marked or designated classified which is the way you know whether something is this is a scandal that is not going away it's getting bigger not smaller she can't face the press the press continues to now ask more and more questions putting the whole candidacy in doubt. Let's go to your phone calls. Rich on line five is listening on WABC in New York. Rich, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. You know, what nobody's talking about is I'm a retired detective sergeant in New York City. This woman is compromised. What you know, we know with this Mickey Mouse server in a bathroom that the Putin has a copy of a whole server, that China has a copy of a whole server. So what's she gonna do? She gets elected. At two o'clock in the morning Putin calls her and says, Hey, you don't do my bidding, I'm gonna I'm going to dump your server, and you're going to go to prison. Nobody's talking about this. This woman is compromised. I worked in that is a very unit to the police department. If we had cops who were compromised, we had to get them out of there. You know, that, that is a very good point, Rich. And, that's, you know, if you go to michaelsavage.com, you can read more about it. And it, it, the, the fact is she went to extraordinary lengths to, to break procedure and, and did put the whole thing at risk. And then you wonder... What, what exactly? I mean, she, maybe we're never going to get an answer to what it is that she was trying to hide. How, you know, how could this be the person that is going to be the next person to take over the White House? Now, another controversy in the news is the term anchor baby. Donald Trump fought back, snapped back at a reporter, trying to say, isn't that politically incorrect? Jeb Bush now is even saying there's nothing wrong with that term. So suddenly this is a term. And, you know, Trump is right. Trump is the one saying, how is this? We have to look into how does someone automatically become an American citizen just because, boom, they're from another country. They come here with the purpose of having that anchor baby. Hunter on line one is listening on WMAL in Washington. Hunter, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation, Hunter. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. They're up. They're legally, there are two ways in which a person becomes a United States citizen. I was an immigration inspector in a time not so long ago, and we learned all of this by heart because it had to be determined on the spot. The first manner is just soli, which I believe is Latin for right of soil. And there, if a person is born on U.S. soil, the person is a United States citizen. The other is just sanguinous, which is the right of blood, which is a person born to a United States citizen. Now, people talk about the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, but what hasn't been brought up is the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. 
<clears throat> in that act, there is a provision for a person born in the United States to two foreign nationals. The, the, the baby is born a, U, a United States citizen, but because the parents of that child are foreign nationals, the provision is that the child returns with the parents to the parents' home country until the child is old enough to petition for them to come to the United States legally. Boy, Hunter, you never hear that part of it, do you? All you hear is that you have the child, and then as a result of that, the parents, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, they all suddenly set up shop and land in America, don't they, Hunter? Well, that, that, there's, that's the issue of, of illegal migration, there, and we're completely out of control on that end. But when it comes yes. to anchor babies, if you think about uh, two sides, you think about two perspectives, the perspective of those of us who are American, and uh, Michelle Malkin wrote a tremendous book, Invasion, several years ago, and she describes it very aptly. Um, there, as Americans, we feel like we're being invaded because people outside of the United States are looking and seeing the opportunity. Yes. There was a change, uh, an amendment. Actually, you know, it wasn't an amendment. It is a law that is not being enforced because as Americans, we're compassionate people. And our but here's compassion- the thing, Hunter. I, I, I think that has hit the level. That we, we are at the highest level of compassion where now people are speaking out and saying enough. Let's go to line four. JC is listening on KSFO in San Francisco. To the DOD and DOE, uh, very uh, high performance uh, computer equipment craze. Uh, hyperscale, the very biggest. And I've also worked for the DOD. I designed uh, some components for the Peacekeeper missile. The idea of wiping a drive is completely ridiculous. Uh, there's a DOD statute, DOD 5220.22.m, which specifies how you wipe a drive. And basically, unless you, what is called the gauss and or essentially take a sledgehammer to the drive, you can recover any material off of that drive. Well, JC, thank you for the call. That's going to be the key. That is absolutely going to be the key. Line six is John listing on WMAL in Washington. John, it's John DePietro filling in for Dr. Savage, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Yes, sir. I was listening earlier. I caught the uh, other folks in my neck of the woods discussing the skiff, and they were absolutely right 100% of the way. One thing they did not cover, just because you go into a skiff and you uh, are you get a brief or you, you have briefs brought to you from the skiff, does not mean that you're actually transmitting the exact data. You can walk in and get a brief and then have the data and type it yourself from your own memory into an email. Um, with imagery, and it's important to note, uh, imagery analysis is not easy and folks who do that are incredibly skilled and very very well trained which means when that image shows up during a brief there is a fairly substantial analysis on exactly what you're looking at with the brief how much you know how hard is it to to memorize or, or remember what you saw most of us do and in this case, I'm not, you know, it, it may not rise to the level where they were actively taking data out, but of course, anybody who goes into a skiff knows darn good and well that any information you hear in there does not come out or ever cross your lips unless you're in a secure facility. So they broke the, John, I, the way you look. John, here's the, here's the thing, John. Based on the information you've had, w- can you confirm in your mind that Hillary definitely broke the law? Absolutely. There is not a doubt in my mind that she broke the law. But you you lend to a certain hysteria if you start talking only about taking data and, and transmitting it directly from a skip. It's not possible, which means you really have to break a ton of laws and a ton of rules and a ton of SOPs to take that data out in hard copy, scan it in somewhere else, and, or take it off a CD or take it via memory stick. And, and the problem is, is that, you know, one of the callers mentioned that most CDs, CD drives on those machines, and most of the USBs have all been disabled. And there's typically one or two individuals who are authorized to copy and even to print. Your, li- your, your printing options are limited. You can't print. I can't go into the skip and just sit there and start printing stuff out. 
I've got to get permission. And then it's going to have to go into a folder, and it's going to have to be secured properly within the skip. or if I have another facility, TPI is going to take it with me to another facility where I'll have to make sure that TPI is always in place and it gets put into a proper storage container there. So right. he broke the law. There's I, no two ways about it. But the, the hysteria that folks are starting to say, you know, well, she took this data out, you know, it's as simple as she took the data out in her skull. Hmm. Thank really, you for the call, John. Let me go to Robert on WFTL. Robert, you're up on the Savage Nation on Hillary. Good mo- uh, hello, Robert. Hi, John. You know, the Michael Savage Show is the best, and you're a great co-host. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Listen, the most educated and intelligent audience on the planet, here's my theory, that that stuff was taken before it even got to the stick. Who loads the stiff computers? That stuff could have been taken before it even got there. That's you right. That's kind of clear. Robert, it would seem obvious. Thank you for the call, Robert. It would seem obvious that, in fact, she did break the law. And now it's just a matter of if they can actually retrieve that to be able to lay it out that way. But uh, Wayne is listening on line two on WMAL. Hello, Wayne. Uh, Thanks for taking my call. Uh, My point is this. We don't need her service. Anybody who sent her an email or got an email from her has a copy of it. So all those ambassadors or whoever was at those embassies and stuff, they're guilty of security violations, too. Very good point, Wayne. Thank you for the call. Folks, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Now, the battle is on. Have you heard Trump went after, well, actually, Jeb Bush went after Trump. Trump shot back on Jeb Bush. We'll play that for you, plus Hillary again. Did you hear Hillary could not come up with an answer for the reporters that would continue to question her? We'll play that of that as well. It's all ahead. Again, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Mr. Trump doesn't have a proven conservative record. He was a Democrat longer in the last decade than he was a Republican. He's given more money to Democrats than he's given to Republicans. It wasn't that long ago that he was for and continues to, haven't denied, I don't think, the fact that he's for a tax on assets. Now, this is a really exotic form of taxation, not tax on income, a tax on assets for people that have, that have more than $10 million of assets, 14%. I mean, you, there's no country in the world that has proposed this. It would be very un-American to do this. It's not a conservative value in my mind. He was for a single-payer system for health care until very recently. Not a very conservative point of view. That is Jeb Bush taking aim at Donald Trump. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Now coming up, we'll, we'll play what Donald Trump responded to him on, but notice there's there's panic within the Bush camp. George W. Bush, former President Bush, he's now raising money for his brother Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush thought he was going to be the front runner, thought he was going to be ahead in the polls. Instead, everyone is talking about Trump, and now Jeb Bush, he's reacting to Trump. Let's go to your calls. Line 8 is Jesse listening on KBOI. Jesse, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yes, I have a couple of uh, comments I'd like to make. Uh, one is... Uh I'm not a Mexican. I've never been to Mexico. My dad's never been to Mexico. We're American, uh, Hispanic, we're Latinos is what I tell my son. And uh, my son was an honor student all during school. And uh, he went to a Hispanic youth symposium for one of the colleges here in Idaho. And he thought he was going to get a scholarship. He didn't get a scholarship. The anchor babies got the scholarships. He had a better chance of his, his parents were immigrants, or if he was a pregnant girl, to get a scholarship. I was in an accident, and I've had five surgeries, and all the the immigrants, the illegals that I know, told me that I have it made, that I don't need to work no more, that Workman's Comp is going to take care of me for the rest of my life. I'm still working. I come from a working family. Working's all I know, and working's all I'm going to do. 
And it, it Thank you. That, Jesse, you, you stay on that path, Jesse. Keep working. We need more people to work. Even the Pope, the Pope is even speaking out now, saying whoever will not work should not eat. Pope Francis praised the value of hard work and willingness to do one's part for the common good rather than freeloading off society. And that is the Pope. Pope Francis said anyone unwilling to work should not eat, adding that being called a hard worker is the highest form of praise for a serious, honest person. The Pope went on to mention how Jesus worked. He called himself a carpenter's son or even a carpenter and said those that don't want to work, those who don't want to work shouldn't eat is a good recipe for losing weight. Boy, try to tell that in Obama's America. Cliff on line three is listening on WMAL in Washington. Cliff, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. John, you're doing a great job. Thanks for taking my call. Anchor Thank you. baby. A person, a baby, relied on for support, stability, or security, i.e., anchor baby. But Donald Trump is using a rather docile term. I like the term plant. I was an a investigator with the police department, and what I'm talking about is a scheme, a trap, a trick to defraud a baby, if you will, placed strategically to advance a plot or a scheme that the parents initiated. How you like that, p- baby? Well, you know, it's a, thank you for the call, Cliff. Either way you slice it, it's about time that somebody is talking about anchor babies. And if it's going to be Trump, it's going to be Trump. He's leading in the polls. He's got the support. He's the front runner. Everyone's following behind him. one 400 savage John DePietro filling in for Dr. Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Savage Newsletter. Log on, michaelsavage.com, where you can also obtain Countdown to Mecca. Still available. Bestseller by Michael Savage. Great end of summer read. You haven't gone on vacation yet? Well, pick up Countdown to Mecca, plus everyone waiting for October. The new nonfiction opus. Pre-order it now on Amazon. Michael Savage, his latest book coming in October, Government Zero. Again, you get details at michaelsavage.com. Well, Donald Trump, he continues to respond to anyone that takes shots at him. Now, there's panic in the Jeb Bush camp. His brother, former President George W. Bush, sent out a fundraising letter. He's starting to try to raise money for him. Jeb Bush did the former governor. He has raised a lot of money, but it is Trump that continues to steal all the headlines, get all the press, leading in all the polls. At a rally in New Hampshire, Trump started to make light of the fact that Jeb Bush is not drawing big crowds. And, you know, right down the road, thank you, right down the road, we have Jeb. Very small crowd. We have 2,500. You have the best real estate, by the way. You have the best real estate. There are other rooms. They have the overflow rooms all over this building. They have closed circuit television, there are people outside with speakers. So I give you credit, and to the other folks, I have to say, we love you equally as much, but the next time you're gonna get here a little bit earlier, right? Something like that. But you know, you know what's happening to Jeb's crowd, as you know, right down the street? They're sleeping, they're sleeping now. Let's go to line two. Harold is listening on KFNX in Arizona. Harold, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Harold. Yes, sir. Good work. God bless, uh, Mr. Savage. Uh, here's the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the NSA has everything. They record everything all the time, 24-7. There's no doubt about it. And the real story is why you know, the NSA already knows Hillary did things. That, so they need to just uh, – the NSA will, has got the goods on all that. The other thing is, big question is, this is a yes or no question for everyone to answer. Did Obama release Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi from the prison? Yes, he did. And now Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi formed ISIS. So it's directly Obama's fault that ISIS is formed. He's directly responsible for aiding and abetting criminal terrorist activity. In the opinion of many retired intelligence people, we believe he's a criminal and should be prosecuted for aiding and abetting terrorist activity. 
Very well said, Harold. Roger's on line nine listening on KSFO. Roger, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Uh, hi, hi. You're on. I'm glad to have you on. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I'm glad to be on, uh, and I'm glad to have a voice, you know, so people can kind of understand what's really uh, going on in this nation. Uh, I would like to uh, let everybody know uh, that um, what's really going on with Hillary and, uh, you know, Donald Trump running for president. Uh, Donald Trump, received, he received a phone call from uh, Bill Clinton not too long ago. Well, what that phone call was about was, you know, for him to run for president, to encourage him to run for president. That, and that's a fact. Uh, also, uh, the reason why he did, he, well, he did that is because he knew in advance that his wife was about to be indicted and brought you know, up with charges. Now, the rabbit hole, you know, who knows how far it really leads to. Uh, I can tell you that, you know, it's going to lead all the way to the White House, all the way to President Obama and the Benghazi. I mean, you just name it. Uh, who knows? I, I don't know about that, Roger. I, I take issue with the fact, I, I don't think that they wanted Trump in the race, and I don't think that that Donald Trump would listen to the Clintons. He's been very forthcoming with the different people that he's donated to. And he's donated to all of them. And I think he did very well during the debate when he said, listen, you know, I date, donated to Hillary, so what'd she do? She had to go to my wedding. I thought he laid it out pretty well. Now, someone that is right now leading Hillary, in some of the polls at least, is in fact Bernie Sanders. Now, listen, this is Bernie Sanders, I believe, in New Hampshire. He's leading, and he talks about the power of Wall Street. They will not be able to succeed... Because the power of corporate America, the power of Wall Street, the power of campaign donors is so great that no president alone can stand up to them. That is the truth. People may be uncomfortable about hearing it, but that is the reality. You know, he's unelectable. He is absolutely unelectable. It is interesting how the outsiders, I mean... Trump is obviously leading in the polls, and a lot of people aren't paying attention, but Sanders is uh, is shot up and is drawing big crowds as Hillary seemingly uh, continues to now go down in the polls. Let's go to line one. Paul is listening on WFTL. Paul, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much for taking my call. Um this, uh, I'm calling about a fact. I lived in Mexico for 20 years, and there's an aspect about this anchor babies that I haven't heard or read, and that is many of the anchor babies go right back to Mexico. Once they get the EBT card benefits, housing benefits, and any other benefits they can get at an address in the United States, whether it be a friend or a family member, they go back to Mexico, and they get the cash that they're receiving in the United States. You can sell a $500 EBT card for $300, and everybody's happy. So many of these anchor babies are going back to their country of origin, and these people are living well off the benefits they receive in the United States. And that is a fact. You know, that is an, thank you for the call, Paul. That is an excellent uh, fact, and it is a fact, folks. Think of the amount of money that does go through. Something has to be done. There's no way the system was ever designed to have all these people come crashing in. And again, think in your own communities. You know, this is really the power and the beauty that Trump has brought to the race. Because he's not wrong. If he wasn't there, if he wasn't speaking out so forcefully, I, I don't believe there's anyone that would be speaking as strongly about it as the way Trump has been the leader on this. And that's why from coast to coast, and everyone that listens to the Savage Nation, why he continues Trump to have such support. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Even though the media keeps trying to predict that he's going to implode in any minute, don't you think, I think he's getting stronger. I'm hearing Democrats saying now they're with Trump. I'm hearing Republicans, and they're trying to throw everything at him. He's not conservative enough. And they keep trying to say he's going to implode any day now. 
The next debate is coming up next month. I think he's going to do fine there. I mean, at what point are they going to come to the realization that right, right now Trump is poised to continue to climb, to win the Iowa caucus, to win New Hampshire, and then probably go cruising right in to South Carolina? Do you see anyone on the forefront that could stop that momentum? Let's go to line six. Pat is listening on KSFO. Pat, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Pat. Hi, John. Um, What these politicians do not realize is by not defending our borders, what they are encouraging is a nomadic society. So we can just forget about state residencies. We can just forget about moving about the country and registering our vehicles, changing our address. I mean, it is a very dangerous line that they are <laughs> they are crossing by not saying that, pe- that by saying that people can come into this country, not have to align with our laws. And also, you might want to check out. I don't know if it's being updated anymore, but Immigration Counters did a state by state um, of all of the services, all of the money in education, money being transferred to Mexico from people living here. So I love Trump. I love what he's saying. I'm an independent, and I'm, I'm telling these, uh, these politicians they better get on board because next the lines that are going to be blurred are state lines. Well, Pat, you know what else is interesting, Pat? Now, you're calling, uh, listing on KSFO. Pat, think how strict they are if someone wanted to attend one of the state universities in California. Now, you, t- you tell people listening, they're very strict. They check it out. They, they don't just let anybody attend because you have to be a state resident. Yet, here they let so somebody can come cruising in here from another country, and boom, they can claim that they're a resident of California. Pat, how, how do you have it both ways? How, if you're the state of California, how do you stop someone from saying, I'm a resident, even though I live in Arizona, I want to attend UCLA and pay the in-state uh, tuition rate, and then how do you turn around and then let someone from a foreign land say that they're a resident? You don't. You don't. You use those people as examples, and you make people produce the documents that pr- uh, the, of proof. I cannot go somewhere and write a check, and I'm white as a piece of paper, without pr- providing them with my driver's license. That's exactly right. Identification. So these politicians... They're skirting a dangerous line. We will have a blurred society. There will be no, it will be a lawless nation, and we are pretty close to it. You're exactly right, Pat. Thank you for the call. Folks, 1 855 400 Savage, if you'd like to dial the program. 1 855 400 7282. Apparently, already in Mexico, the Mexicans, according to the Washington Post, Trump's bid is getting scarier. Never mind building the wall. It blocked the billions of dollars that Mexicans illegally in the United States sent home to their families, prevent their children born in America from automatically becoming U.S. citizens. How does that sound in Mexico? Well, a prominent Mexican columnist said, we don't know if we should laugh or cry. We really think he's a nightmare. What he says makes me laugh, but it's a nervous laughter, said a professor of the International Studies Center, prestigious college of Mexico. Now listen to this comment. His comments sound to me like Germany in the 1930s when they made Jews responsible for everything that was happening. He's playing with the fears of an important part of the American population. Perhaps that will help him win the nomination, but it won't help him with the election. He won't have the Hispanic vote that is very important. You know, that is not Germany in the 1930s. Because of just, I mean, it, it's apple. It's not even apples and oranges, you know, as they, they like to say. It's a, actually apples and trucks. It is, it is so far off the scale. Th- this is just the sheer cost of what it is with crime, with the schools, with the hospitals, with the money being shipped out of the country. Think of just if some of that money actually stayed in the country or people came here and did it the right way be night and day look at the effect that he is already having and he's not even he's not even the nominee yet but i love this story of pope francis saying whoever will not work should not eat think of that to the people that are all the entitlement people 
to the people that abuse the EBT cards, the people that abuse food stamps, or someone just said using, selling the EBT cards. Here's the Pope saying anyone unwilling to work should not eat. Tell that to the people that say just want to sit back and gimme, 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 the entitlement crowd. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Our website is michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This is the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call in one 855 400 Savage. Let's go out to line eight. Bill is listening on KVOR. Bill, you're up on this. Thank you very much, Bill. I appreciate that. Service, civilian and military, and uh, have been on inspector generals or IG teams that inspect these gifts or sensitive compartment and information facilities. And uh, I'm glad to see a lot of military and agency personnel calling in, and I could corroborate that everything that you've heard uh, is true and genuine. Uh, And two things that I wanted to point out here. I don't normally call national talk, call on shows. That's all right. The the reason things are done secret, and it's in the regulations, people can look this up, is that it caused very serious damage to the United States and its operations. Top secret, the verbiage used, or the the criteria used are exceptionally grave damage to the United States and its operations. Hmm. When you transport, otherwise compromise, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, top secret information, you have caused or potentially can cause exceptionally grave damage to the United States and its operations. People have been... Do you think she's... Do you think she's aware of that, Bill? That's why she's being so secretive? People at that level, they, that political level, sorry, uh, Michael talks about the political class. Uh, they, I don't know if they are born this way or they become part of the political elite because they are that way or they acquire it, but they become, there's a form of sociopathy. You know, well, Bill, isn't it, Bill, isn't it possible that she knows, Hillary Clinton knows, that the information has been compromised by a foreign government and she has panicked and doesn't want to alert us to that's what that is what has happened don't you think that's possible oh certainly and uh you know you have a you have a uh, you know a, a foreign service officer or a consulate officer who might be talking to his peer right with one of our uh allies in the area say it's turkey right about possibly backing an appropriate that exactly that could be compromised bill thank you again the website is michaelsavage.com this is john DePietro filling in for dr michael savage you've been listening to the savage nation